Well, YouTube, we're back on the dolly build here. Um, I don't feel like I've got a whole lot done, but apparently Charlie does. Uh, Charlie's my buddy who uh, watches obnoxious amounts of YouTube videos. Let's put it this way. He watches more YouTube videos than TV. So that being said, he says I'm due for an update. So here's an update for you on the dolly build. Gonna start off with rear suspension. Let's see if I can get this all in one shot. Got a little template made up for how the rear suspension's gonna go. Got the bracket on, Got the bag in place, lower mount kind of welded up. Got a bracket I need to get to have made. Um, arm's gonna come up and go to stock spring hanger. So we're gonna have that set up on either side. And we're going to stop that from swinging back and forth. Uh, we're going to have that set up on either side. And then there's going to be a third link on the uh, top of the axle for a nice three-link setup. When you look here, all my markings are on the other side of the template. We're going to have four holes for adjustability. Because, well, why not? I do have to put a kind of Z-bend offset in here. And I'm going to make it out of a quarter-inch plate. So this bracket's gonna fit right down here between the U-bolt holes. The U-bolts are gonna hold everything in place. I gotta go ahead and come up with some kind of pin to locate everything still. Um, that shouldn't be too much of a problem there. You can use a bolt with the head ground down if you really want to, so. Uh, but after I come up with the pin to locate everything, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get these uh, Plates made up at the local uh, steel supply yard there who does bending and plasma cutting, CNC plasma cutting. So it'll be nice and accurate and nice and perfect. And then get that all welded up and at least have one rear link arm in place, you know. The rear bag's in place there. Um, Got to run lines and whatnot. But that's going to give you an idea of what we're running. As far as clearances go... Pardon me blocking the light. There we go. That gives you a little better. Um, shifter don't get in the way for that column. So we're maybe an inch or so from the drum. The way these wheels are going to set up, I'm going to be probably about an inch or two from the actual uh, tire. So I'm going to have enough clearance. I could have more. But the way the bags and brackets are designed, it's going to work out very, very nicely. So a ton, a ton of junk on here. A lot of wheels. Uh, cobbling something together there. That's also why the column's there. Um, you know, most of this isn't parts anymore. So parts have been going on. When you get up into the cab, you can see there's a shifter, some seats, interiors going back together, the headliners most of the way in. Um new brand new carpets in got to come up with a shifter boot somehow there but that's not a main priority heater box is in yeah, and part of the uh, horrible horrible lighting in here uh, we'll get you a shot from the other side then too come up around We've got the heater box in place just held in place with vice grips for now um you know just kind of get everything mocked up i'm gonna put some bolts in it then Turbo's on, turbo's mounted, the boost line here for the boost gauge is ran. So this side is pretty well buttoned up, minus the exhaust as you can see. Uh, stock DT360 downpipe is pretty much the exact shape I need. Um, but I'm going to have to go ahead and get something else made because it's just a little bit long. It just contacts that back part of the firewall there where you can see the uh, clutch line mounts right there. So, yeah, contacts just to the uh, left of that. Uh, other than that, it'll clear the heater box fine. That's not an issue. But we'll have to do something there. I could go ahead and get an offset manifold or custom make a manifold or make Dodge Cummins manifold work and all this other happy stuff, but... You know, I think I'm just going to do the custom downpipe and call it a day. Considering I'm going to make it out stainless steel and it's going to last the life of the vehicle anyway. 
I have a nipple here for the heater hose. I have some wiring ran. It's alternator wiring. Still need to put the power steering pump in down there too on this side. Um, I need to get the hoses for the power steering. Uh, I need to get two made or so and then the rest uh, I just need to get extended. So we do have the hydro boost set up up there as you can see. You need to extend that one, three inch body lift. The hydro boost line does not reach anymore. Uh, so that one needs extended. There's to be a hose coming from the box over top of the engine. You can see that little bracket back in there. Uh, I'm toying around using those to hold something. Heater hoses or, you know, those lines for the power steering or whatnot. So, that's uh, not 100% yet, but, you know, we'll, we'll get that worked out. Uh, turbo is 80% uh, plumbed. The lower setup's on. I need to go ahead and find one weird fitting uh, for the upper end there, which... At one point, I'll make a uh, point to go do that. Um, but I need to find a fitting to go into there. And then I can plumb the upper point of it too. The factory turbo oil feed is actually a flange, so I'm going to cut that down. And I'm going to put in a compression style fitting for that. 205 transfer case is fully rebuilt. Um, everything spins and works so that's good news there I'm gonna go ahead and uh, oh I did get this bearing in that I missed the uh, bearing goes behind this retainer here on the uh, rear output you can go ahead and start fabbing up a cross member for it so we'll get that made up um, and then get this mounted in place start getting drive shafts on so, you know, we're, we're getting there. Actually, I need to tighten this one, too, I think. Yes, I do. Good thing I uh, caught that. Uh, all the fuel lines are in now. So, the fuel system is, once I get the batteries in and everything else, 100% functional. Because we do have an electric uh, primer pump along with the manual primer pump that's still right there. We do have an electric primer pump down on the frame wheel also. Uh, fuel system's fully ran, oil system's 80% done. Like I said, I need the uh, feed line and I need this oil pressure line. It goes up to mechanical gauge there. Um, you can get new hoses for this uh, oil return and the coolant return here. Uh, no coolant feed there, maybe. I don't know, I gotta look at it a little closer, but... Yeah, do you need a couple hoses along with the heater hoses we're gonna get run all them so started trying to find out where to run intercooler piping down there's a little tight I think up in through here is gonna be a better bet take the plasma cutter notch that out a good bit get me some clearance there and put some more paint on it and I think that's probably where we're gonna run the intercooler piping and it's a more straight shot if we can get it all in one view here from the intake over to there than it is down to there to the intake. But we're gonna see all that here. Uh, once we come around and go underneath. There we go. You can see the fuel filter and the carrier pump there. Uh, fuel filter is a little greasy. Uh, I had it on the engine before the engine was cleaned. But, you know, it's a filter. It's going to get changed, so I'm not too worried about it. I might wipe it off then. Um, all the uh, lines here are low pressure, so you don't have to worry about, you know, too much high pressure stuff. We did use um, some banjo style bolts, as you can see right there in the center. Sorry, you get about the horrible lighting. We did use some banjo style bolts like the factory DT360 setup used, but this uh, filter head and filter would not fit anywhere in the engine bay. So I relocated down here. I'm pretty happy with it. It sits higher than a spring hanger, higher than the uh, skid plate that I'm leaving here. And the skid plate's actually like covering the rear of the transmission. So, you know, it uh, was the transfer case skid plate, not no more. Now it's a rear of transmission skid plate, but transmission actually tucks up in real nice. It's you can kind of see it's a little bit hanging down and uh, it's no more than factory so I'm not concerned about that 
I got our suspension, I mean our suspension, our body bushings in with the body lift. And as you can see, e-brake cables are animated, little bracket to uh, adapt that up there by the body uh, mount. Uh, there's a little bracket there to make it work because it won't go through the factory hole and the body mount and still fit. <laughs> um, you know, so we're getting there, it's coming along. Last part of the update happens to be inside. Yeah, that's a uh, wheel off an 06 or something Explorer. Um, either way, I like it, and I think I'm going to keep it. Got a little more work to do to make it work 100%, but, I mean, it's mounted to the column and in place. It is a tilt column, so I'll have that adjustability there. Shifter comes pretty close. Um, however, if I recall... Yeah, it's like the whole way over in first and second gear, which I'll rarely be using. So, there's a neutral. And there's about a three to four inch gap now, once I get it in a third, so. Third through seventh, seventh is gonna be my main setup there. Um, you know, the first and second are going to be lows. And I'm making this to tell. I'm not making this to go fast. Uh, see up in here, I have it stashed. Here's the uh, throttle shut off. Still got to decide where to put that, what to do with that. Um, got this door all put together and wrapped up. I'm not sure if I covered that yet or not. But it is all put together and wrapped up just like the interior panels. And the mirror back on because we probably aren't gonna fit that out the garage door at this time um at least until i get the thing running so you know it's not in here very accurately placed <laughs> so i hope you enjoyed the update on the dt360 swap into the dually project um you know any questions feel free to ask i'm gonna keep uh keep pounding things out on this keep getting more and more done and hopefully by the end of winter have uh the whole body buttoned up and back together and all the plumbing ready and have it started so that's at least my time frame plan for you keep an eye open for a run video